If you've ever used an SD card as a boot drive in a Raspberry Pi, or when transferring some software onto a computer, you'll know that when we plug it back into our Windows computer, it can't read it. The card isn't broken, it just needs to be reworked so that we can reuse it. So let's find out how we do that. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. As you saw from the intro there, um, I've just taken an SD card out of my Raspberry Pi and that was being used as the boot drive. And when I plug it into my Windows computer, it's only coming up as a four megabyte drive rather than the 16 gigabytes. And that's really to do with the way that the SD card has been formatted to make it work as a Linux boot drive. It's been partitioned in a special way that's divided it up into various boot sectors and then data sectors. And this is just not compatible at all with our Windows system. It just isn't able to read those. And no matter what we do with the formatting and so on in Windows, we just don't seem to be able to get anything back as regards the size of our SD card. So really what we need to do is to clean the drive and then repartition it. Now that sounds a bit technical, um, but it really isn't. It's, it's a very simple procedure, but it's one that's not obvious. So um, I'm just going to take you through it now, so at least you know exactly what to do if you ever need to get back these SD cards and then just rebuild them so that you can use them again as normal USB drives. So let's get into our command console and see how it's done. The standard Windows installation is very good for day-to-day -day running of your computer, but we need, to, we need to go to a lower level when we want to play with disk partitions. So even when we go into our start menu, the settings area there doesn't let us get down this far. And indeed, there are some sort of deeper down settings we can get to through Windows. So, so say we go into our control panel, so I've just um, just typed in control there in the search and we've got control panel, which gives us access to a lot more features on our computer. And if we go even deeper down into our administrative tools, we'll see that we get to an area where we've got lots now of our actual sort of configuring our, the way in which Windows is set up. And we can actually go to something called computer management. And if I bring that into view, and this then lets us get to the actual sort of hardware of our computer. And one of those is our disk management system. And if we go in there, you'll see that it starts to bring up the actual disk drives in our computer. And there we can see lots of things attached to my computer. And if I scroll down a bit, you'll eventually see that we get to our USB drive. And there we have our five megabyte partition. And it's then saying that there's 14 gigabytes, which is unallocated. But unfortunately, this disk management system isn't able to manipulate this disk drive for us. If I try and, and delete that, that um, partition there, I, I can't do it. So this does let us get to a lot of information. And if you, if you do need to play about with your computer, then obviously this is the area where you, you, where you can do that. But we need to go to an even deeper level down and use one of the command line tools called disk part, which is a disk partitioning application. So we'll need to open up a command prompt window with administrator access. And that just really means that it is allowed then to modify certain bits at the low level on our computer. So if we open up our Windows button and then type CMD, that brings up our command prompt. There's the option here then to run that as administrator. And if I select that, it then just asks me if I want to confirm that and I say yes. And that just opens up our command prompt window. If you're not familiar with the command prompt, this is simply just a little terminal which lets us talk directly to Windows. And we can then start typing in, in here, various text commands. We, 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 don't, we don't use our mouse and, and sort of icons anymore. We're now talk, talking directly to Windows. And if we want to run an application, we have to type it in by name. So we want to run disk partition. So disk part is the actual name of this app. And we run that. We're now in disk partition and you can see the prompt, the little um, 
where the cursor is, we, it now says disk parts, which tells us we are inside this program. And I can now type in commands. And, and there's no way around, you just need to know what these commands are. Um, so the ones we're going to use are list disk, which will ask disk partition, what disks have I got attached to my computer? And you'll see a list comes up there. Now we need to identify which is the USB drive that we want to work with. And you can see here, just by looking at the sizes of these disks, you can see that we have various hard disks here up in the hundreds of gigabytes and a little um, 14 gigabyte, which is my USB drive. Now, if you're not sure which one's which, if, if I unplug my USB drive and then do list disk again, you can see which one has disappeared. And then if I plug it back in again and then do list disk, you can see that we now have that back in. So it's definitely disk number three, which is my USB drive. So we want to make sure that we now select disk three. And it's very important then, I would always advise you to make sure that we now have that correctly selected. So if I do list disk again, you should find that we have a little asterisk beside the disk, which is now selected. So we have there, disk three is definitely the one that's selected, and that is definitely my USB drive. Because what we're gonna do next is we are going to clean that drive. And, and cleaning it will remove all of the partitions and all of the data that is on that disk drive. So if we are not working on the correct disk drive, we're going to completely blank one of our hard drives. And of course, that is not something you're going to easily recover from. So do make sure you select the disk and do make sure you do a last list disk command and confirm that we are actually talking to the correct disk. So we are now going to clean the disk and this will remove all the partitions and all the data from that drive. And that's now given us a completely blank drive. And this is actually even more blank than just not having any files on it. We don't have any partitions, which are the areas where we can put data, and we don't have any format on it either. So first of all, we need to create a partition. So let's create a partition. And we want this to be a primary partition, which simply means that we will create the, the main partition on the disk. And just doing it this way will actually create the whole disk as a single partition, in other words, a single disk drive. So if we create that, so we now have a partition on our USB drive. And all we need to do next is to format that so we can start putting some files on it. So we have two options. We can exit out of disk partition and just simply go into our Windows Explorer and format the drive there. And again, that, that is, 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 is a nice easy process. Or, or we can do it actually from inside here using a command line. So the command to format a disk is just simply format. We then have to specify what file system we want to use on that. Uh, and usually we will go for something called FAT32. And that uh, is a sort of generic format that can be read in most computers. So Windows, Macs, Linux computers can all read FAT32. Um, other options here, we, we could do NTFS disks, which is sort of more of a Windows style format, or the EXFAT, which is more of a Linuxy, um, Unix type um, file system. But we're, we're gonna go just simply with, to make this a more generic USB drive that we can use for transferring data around, we're gonna use FAT32. Now, if we just run that command as it is, that's going to do a low level format, which will take around about 10 to 20 minutes. But it does physically clean all of the data from the drive. Now, we don't really need to do that because um, we're just gonna be using it ourselves as a general transfer disk. So all we need to do is format it so that Windows believes it to be blank, and then we'll just be able to write to any bit of the drive it needs to but it does still leave the data in there, um, but you do need specialist software to retrieve that, so it is, it is fairly safe. But we want to do a quick format, and that will just simply, as I say, it will rewrite the structure of the disk just to make sure that Windows sees it as being empty without having to physically rewrite every bit on that USB drive, which is a bit that takes the time.
So if we do this, you'll see that it takes um, just a, a, f a few seconds. So if I run that, sometimes it doesn't actually give you a progress on the um, formatting process, but it'll suddenly just jump to 100% after a few more seconds. So hopefully, and there we have it, okay? So that was a quick format, and our drive is now ready to use. So let's exit out of disk partition, and we'll close down our command prompt, and we should now be able to use that as a normal USB drive. So opening up Windows Explorer, we can see our drive is now recognized, and it's now recognized as a 14 gigabyte USB drive. And if we open that up, we now have our empty space, and we can just simply now use that as normal. So that's taken our boot drive from Linux, cleaned it, repartitioned it, reformatted it, and it's now ready to use back on our Windows machines. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if so, please do subscribe and hit the notification bar to make sure that you get a notification as soon as I release any more videos. Uh, and don't forget to check out the project page on my website. I'll, I'll put the links in the description below. So any of the commands we've been using today um, on this disk part uh, application, they'll all be listed out there so you, can, you don't have to remember them and read them from the video. So hopefully I will see you in another video soon. And bye for now. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.